Welcome to Wizards Institute, the number one community to learn smart investing and financial independence. Our guest today is Victor Lee, who previously worked at CPPIB, the Canadian pension fund that manages $400 billion. Victor is a veteran financial economist and investment analyst with 20 plus years of experience investing across multiple asset classes. At CPPIB, he conducted research on real estate, infrastructure, blockchain, climate change, helping to deploy hundreds of millions of dollars. Since retirement, Victor continues to research macro trends and investment opportunities for his own portfolio. And to serve local communities, he teaches personal finance to a group of women and co-founded the DeFi Toronto Meetup. With a CFA designation, Victor will share his insights on macro trends, investment strategies, and risk management. Uh, nothing really that great uh, an investor compared to many, many smart people in this space, uh, even compared to Sam, you know, I'm much to learn from Sam. Um, uh, but I, I think my background was a little bit uh, unusual in the, some sense that it gave me some um, advantage, but also give me some uh, bias. So just uh, quickly give you a little bit, uh, uh, some of my background that has, has not covered by Sam, so that you know uh, maybe my strengths, but also knowing my personal bias or weakness. So um, uh, I did my undergrad and a graduate study in uh, economics, uh, uh, particularly financial economics. Um, so, uh, so I'm not, uh, uh, you know, like an entrepreneur like Sam or other uh, people like MBA background. Uh, so I tend to think, uh, look at the world uh, from more of a macro perspective, uh, try to understand what's the uh, longer term trend. And then from there, I try to make my investment decision. Uh, so today is, is just to share uh, some of the, uh, the, uh, the approach that I have been taking for the last 20 years. Um, and I also have fortune, uh, fortune to work uh, in the research and the risk management department in two largest pension funds. So I, I learned to see uh, how the macro uh, can impact on investment decision. And also I uh, cover more than one asset class. So I did uh, work in the real estate department for a while and then, then, then come back to the the research and risk department, which continue to cover real estate, but also cover uh, fixed income, uh, GTA, the, so, uh, the, uh, G, uh, tactical asset allocation, and also economic research as well. Um, so, uh, so I have a little bit benefit of uh, looking at a different asset class that give me a somewhat slight different perspective compared to an investor uh, who only do equity investing. You know, there's there's some very great. Uh, stock picker, uh, portfolio manager out there, and there's some great uh, deal maker who are focused on doing deal from bottom up, like private equity or doing real estate investment, a lot of due diligence. Um, so that's a little bit my, my, my background so that you know that uh, what uh, is my potential strength or potential is my, my weakness or bias. So uh, let's jump into uh, my, uh, my slide I prepared. Uh, I spent about uh, uh, three days to prepare this slide with, because I, I really appreciate uh, Sam to invite me to, sh to talk about this. So I really want to share what I personally uh, doing and uh, you, can, you can see if there's any value to, to apply to your personal investment or not. So, uh, so my talk on my title is Macro Driven investment approach. Uh, so which I just told you that uh, because my background, I tend to look at the macro. Uh, 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 that's where my starting point. And later on, and then I combine with a bottom up research on the individual company to see whether it is a right company to invest or not. But I start with a top down approach. Okay. So a little bit disclaimer as usual that uh, you know this is this presentation is just for education only and you know don't take as an investment advice. Uh, make sure you do your own research uh, before making any investment. Uh, if one thing I learned from the uh, last over twenty years is that no investment is 
guaranteed. There's no, anybody tell you that investment is, is guaranteed return, good return, it's just lying. Um, I, I have my, um, you know, experience that I uh, invest and, you know, I thought I, is, a, is a sure bet. It turned out to be that, um, you know, it turned out to be a very lousy investment. So, uh, so, so keep that in mind when you, when you uh, go uh, listen to my, uh, 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 watch my slide. So the agenda is uh, basically, I'm gonna describe the process. How do you do uh, macro-driven investment? Then I'm gonna highlight some macro trend that currently I see in, in this world for the next five to 50 years. Um, and then I use a two example. One is the, the current pandemic, another is a, climate change, which is an even longer trend, a macro trend to see that what's a, what are the, uh, uh, the risks and opportunity, you know, those, those, those macro trends can, can um, uh, you know, make you bearish on some industry, but also make, can you make you more bullish on some other industry. Then we jumped into more of a company specific research. Uh, the nice thing about today is that because the regulation that all company has to disclose their financial statement quarterly, at least in North America it's quarterly, and they, uh, there's no insider trading is allowed. So uh, if you are trying to pick a stock, uh, you are very fortunate because you have the same information as uh, the, the one working in the investment bank. Uh, now the order, earning call, investor presentation is all public. You can listen at the same time as the Wall Street analyst. Uh, you, may, you may not get a chance to ask the question, but you are not at the information disadvantage uh, because you know, all the information is required by regulation that to, to, uh, to publish uh, to the public at the same time. Uh, and then we go into, uh, after you get a good idea, how did you invest? Uh, especially try to take a more of a portfolio approach rather than uh, one by one individual investment, uh, consider them uh, in the context of your portfolio rather than just uh, in isolation. Okay, here's my, my four step uh, of a macro driven investment approach. You start with identify some macro theme that lasts at least uh, more than one year, ideally five year, maybe even uh, uh, 10 year. Um, that's give you, uh, give you a long-term perspective rather than chasing what is popular right now. You want something that trying to last at least for a few years so that you can take advantage. Uh, and uh, especially if you are a patient investor like me, I uh, tend to invest five year or out uh, because I feel that in the short term, there's so many people, so many investors, especially the, the Wall Street, they, they all crowd in the short term for next quarter, next year, uh, because their bonus, their salary, their incentive, their the corporate goal, they are all very short term. So I don't feel that I have any advantage to uh, invest, to compete with those, uh, those Wall Street analysts. So I try to stay away from the short-term thinking, try to look at the long-term. Then from the macro, macro theme, if that you believe that is true, then you try to think about what industry, what sector or what country can be benefit or, or suffer from those trends. From there, then you go into looking individual company to look at the financial statement. <laughs> Yellow and pink. Uh, Um, one second, Victor. I'm gonna. Okay. Can everybody just mute themselves, please? Yeah. Okay. okay. Victor, please. Okay. So here I'm just list uh, some uh, macro trend. Most of them you already know. Uh, you probably read a newspaper. Uh, you already hear, you know, from tech talk or, or from from news, and uh, and those trend are uh, uh, are important because. Uh, it's like um, if you if you uh, 
uh, it's hard to make money, especially hard to make money uh, against the benchmark, which is the market index. Um, so here, you know, we have pandemic, climate change. Climate change is really, really uh, a big, important uh, risk to humanity uh, that can last until the end of these centuries. So really, you really need to pay attention as an investor how uh, uh, climate change impact. Uh, when I was at the CPPIB, I was uh, cover uh, real estate and infrastructure. And uh, the climate change was one of the risk assessment that we have to do. For example, if you buy an airport uh, in the world, most of them are actually next to the ocean. I think about Hong Kong, think about the New York airport, the LaGuardia airport, they're all uh, next to the water, next to the ocean. So if the sea level rise, you, your infrastructure, you know, maybe in 25 years is underwater. Um, other one related to demographic, which is quite interesting, is that, um, you know, in Canada, in the US, um, especially in Europe, the aging population is a big issue. Uh, we have lower birth rate, but sometimes the, um, the medicine is advanced so much that we could end up live 10 years, 20 years, or even 50 years uh, longer than our parents. Uh, so that can really change the, uh, the structure of the demographic. So uh, that can have a lot of implication. Um, so so that, I'm just using this few as an example. Of course, we can drill down one by one. We can talk, even each topic we can talk about half hour, but we don't have time here. So I'm just going to put out this idea out there for you to think about it. And uh, you, pro you probably can come up some uh, brilliant other uh, ideas that you can invest from those macro trends. Um, I, I love reading books, especially those macro trend books. And here are a few that I would recommend to you uh, if you have time, if you enjoy reading books. Uh, you know, the first one, the first one is just published, I think, uh, early uh, last year, the, the, the Future Faster Than You Think, which published by two um, people in uh, Silicon Valley. They cover, you know, uh, EV, uh, virtual reality, um, you know, medicine, uh, so cover very broad, a lot of macro trend uh, or technology trend that it, it could happen within either is already started or it will happen within the next five years to 10 years. Um, this one is the second book is related to uh, pandemic. Um, this book is actually published in 2012 and uh, it already predict that uh, we eventually see a pandemic, the disease that transmit from animal to human, then from human transmit to human. So that's a, a, a good book to, to, to read if you want to understand uh, the, the pandemic. And uh, did you know that in the last 300 years, uh, we have nine pandemic that kill at least 1 million people. That basically is uh, three times every 100 years. Uh, so even though if this COVID-19 may be over later this year, it doesn't mean that it will not happen again. Um, so, so that's a, a good book to catch up. Uh, Six Extinction is a book um, about uh, climate change and how that affecting uh, our ecosystem, uh, our biodiversity. Um, apparently in US, uh, the, uh, the bird in the city, observed in the city, has declined by 30% since um, 1970s in US. And now because we have less travel, uh, they notice that there's more bird coming back uh, to the city. So that's uh, something uh, interesting to, 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 to read about. Uh, Lifespan is the book is related to the macro trend I just talked about, is that um, now uh, the scientists, special medical research uh, uh, doctors believe that maybe aging is not a natural process, but instead is a, is a, is a form of disease. So if you can find a cure to, to this disease, you can live much, much longer. 
Um, so that's uh, some interest, interesting, uh, um, uh, interesting book that a friend uh, recommended recommend to me that uh, a month ago. Uh, the last book uh, is uh, about uh, space. Uh, the future of humanity is about space. Uh, why a human uh, shouldn't be just stay on this planet Earth. We should be a multi-planetary species. There's many reasons. One of the reasons is that uh, the, the, the Earth may eventually become uh, difficult to us to live here, maybe disease, maybe global warming. Uh, that's one reason. The other reason is that the world is so, the world, universe is so large, maybe we'll discover new planet that human can stay, live there. Maybe we can discover some uh, 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 smart species in other planet. So it's a very fascinating, fascinating book to read. So let's go on to um, the, the current pandemic. Um, this, this chart is uh, quite uh, interesting. It shows uh, different country, the, 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 the growth of the confirmed case country by country. Uh, as you can, two things you can notice here. Number one is that US now become the has the highest, the largest number of confirmed cases in the world, and and it still grow at a very fast rate. Uh, if you notice that on the on the, my uh, uh, Y scale is a log scale, so so that tell you is that even though the line look like a linear line, is actually exponential growth, and uh, one one thing about exponential growth is that human doesn't human tend to think in linear form. We usually don't think in exponential form. So we tend to underestimate at the beginning. So, uh, so for, the, uh, for um, exponential growth is that at the beginning, it almost look at a linear line and then suddenly go very, very fast. Uh, so people tend to under prepare in the early stage. So in, in the case of a pandemic, this is really bad for us. But as an investor, some technology is also exponential growth. So uh, sometimes uh, there's opportunity present to you at the beginning, people don't notice, people don't see uh, the potential because the growth is so slow, looks so unthreatening, uh, just like you know, one uh, Apple first re released iPhone, um, Blackberry at that time uh, um, called uh, the company called Research in Motion. The Blackberry they they just dismiss it. They say, "Well, who want you to use a a cell phone uh, that has no keyboard? Uh, there's nothing work." So uh, as the competitor uh, underestimate uh, uh, Apple's uh, the in impact of the iPhone. Um, let me take, let me. Check my notes to see I have some point missed point and then here. Um, uh, so, so at the beginning, uh, one China, the news about this uh, pandemic happened. A lot of country didn't take it seriously, and now everyone take it seriously. Uh, so just show you that um, people can be underprepared uh, for the event that is we never seen before, at least in most people's lifetime, this is the first time to see that. Um, another thing uh, I learned, observed over the last um, uh, three or four weeks is that um, in terms of this kind of crisis, what you notice that is the financial market suddenly uh, uh, drop all the assets started to decline together. Um, because there's a liquidity crisis, people need money uh, to pay their rent, to cover the expenses, and a lot of hedge funds, uh, they have to cover their short position. So they, everyone should try to sell, everyone try to sell. So the liquidity dry up, even including a good company, uh, even including gold. You, now you look back, the gold has done really well, but uh, during the day that has a massive sell-off, people even sell gold. The reason why is that people need cash, so they, they, can, they will sell what they can sell. Uh, it doesn't mean that all the things sold is 
bad company. So that gives you opportunity uh, in terms of when there's a liquidity crisis, you can uh, buy those uh, companies that are oversold. Uh, another thing I observe uh, in this pandemic is that uh, our world economy is optimized for efficiency, uh, but not for res resiliency. Uh, now you we realize, oh, oh God, we, all the medical supply is come from uh, one country or two country. Uh, we don't have manufacture domestically. Uh, we suddenly run out, you know, even the basic, uh, you know, medical mask or ventilator, and nobody making enough. You know, we have to call on uh, automobile manufacturer to make, you know, ventilator. So, so that show you that, uh, you know, there's some downside of a uh, very uh, efficient eco global economy that's so integrated um, uh, that may make the crisis worse when, when we have this kind of problem. Um, the impact on, on our job market at the labor market is very, very unprecedented. Uh, this is a US initial job claim, jobless claim um, uh, chart. Uh, you can see that uh, until last week, uh, we have 6.7 million people claim they lost their job compared to the last 30 years. This is just out of, you know, just unprecedented, just, you know, uh, extreme outlier. Uh, in the past, the worst case was uh, early, to early 1980, which is 1981, 82, we have a recession. We have un unemployment nine, almost 10%. And uh, in the, during the great financial crisis in the 2008, we only just over 9% unemployment. And you can see the jobless claim is, is well below 1 million people. Now we have just such high unemployment. So this time is really, uh, the impact is really serious. Uh, one people lost job and uh, what's that mean? Uh, some people even compare to the Great Depression of the uh, uh, 1929 to 1933. At that time we have at the peak of of the, uh, the depression, we have 25% unemployment rate. So whether we can get to there, uh, we will see, it depends on how we control the spread of the virus. Uh, so we, we all know that uh, certain industries really suffer a lot, uh, like airline, cruise ship, uh, they really suffer, all the tourism related, or the retail industry also suffer a lot. Um, um, but sometimes there's also create a lot of opportunity or some industry sector uh, will performing much better than others. And I'm just listing here all the idea that I collect over the last uh, few weeks, uh, some from Twitter, some from uh, newspaper. Uh, you can just take a look. I'm just going to mention uh, uh, quite a, a few uh, here. Um, uh, um, airline and cruise ship uh, both suffer a lot, but I think uh, airline is more likely to bounce back or more likely to be bailed out by government than cruise ship because airline is a necessity to our economy, where cruise ship is more of a luxury. Uh, so if I have to bet uh, that which one I will buy uh, at the bottom to, to, to to buy between these two, I will probably buy airline uh, once the, the, if you believe this bottomed. Um, I'm in, I was in real estate. Uh, I cover a lot of uh, uh, um, office, retail, shopping mall. Uh, you think about uh, the recent trend of uh, re uh, remote work, people working from home. Um, now, because of the pandemic, um, maybe we end up have to have more people work remote uh, rather than everyone crowd in the office. Um, my former employer, uh, CPP, uh, 
what they did in, in during the pandemic in Hong Kong is that they separate uh, employee to, to two group. One group will work out from home for two weeks and then they switch and between them they sanitize. So if you believe that uh, the virus may come back in the future or maybe there's more other type of virus surface, then perhaps we really don't need so many office space. We could just cut by say 30% or, or 40% and ask you know, the people that uh, can work from home, they can rotate between that, between uh, home and office. Um, let me see. Uh, the beneficiary of, uh, of the industry is, is much more, uh, much longer list. Uh, you know, right now we're using Zoom. You know, Zoom has done really well uh, over the uh, over the last few months, for obvious reason. Another interesting thing is is, is uh, virtual reality. I don't know how many of you have a Oculus VR headset. Uh, I have one, and uh, I have using it uh, quite a bit, especially with my daughter. So. So I really see the potential of VR from my personal experience. Um, now you can host meetup in VR form, uh, which is interesting that uh, not just uh, the Zoom, but you can actually host VR, uh, so meetup in the, v, in the VR format. And the VR also let you play um, games. You can watch a movie in VR uh, in the Oculus headset. And also you can do fitness. There's quite a few uh, game I like to uh, play. It's more of a sport game. Uh, you can just almost like an indoor fitness. So there's a multiple um, uh, uh, utility from a single headset. And guess who own uh, Oculus headset? Oculus is Facebook, uh, which is also interesting. I'm, you know, I own Facebook share. Uh, I was, I like everyone else, I was quite worried about uh, they are they are privacy breach. You know they uh, they really get in themselves in the hot water by by not protecting users' privacy. Um, so the benefit of VR is that VR, unlike the social, unlike the Facebook, which depend on advertising, uh, the VR Oculus VR actually does not depend on advertising. Uh, it it is a sales of hardware and the software, the gaming, almost like. Um, uh, Game, game publisher. So that will add uh, a level of diversification to the business model of Facebook, So, which is a good thing. Uh, so if you happen to be a Facebook investor, you should be happy to see that the Facebook now have a new revenue stream that does not depend on um, advertising. In fact, is uh, quite benef can quite benefit from pandemic because everyone has to stay home, they have to you know, entertain themselves. Uh, so that's something to th think about it. Okay, so, so that's some of the example. Here, do you notice that I, I have two group of uh, industry or sector or surface, one in black, one in blue. Do you know the difference? Why do I classify them in black and blue? Well, I classify because the black is representing physical economy. The blue is more of a digital economy. So that also tell you qu quite a bit about which country can do better. So because the pandemic, because um, uh, it affecting the, any economic activity that require in-person uh, interaction, so they will suffer. But the, the, the business that is digital tend to do better. Uh, you can think about the company that, you know, Netflix is digital economy. Uh, you can think about Spotify is a digital economy. Uh, you can think about um, online education is a digital economy. So, so, so if you think that way, you can give you uh, um, a lot of um, insight into what country, what uh, a business to invest. Uh, using Canada and US as example, Canada is much more dependent on physical economy. We depend on commodity, oil, gas, agriculture, uh, uh, even you know, um, construction, real estate. Uh, where US, they also have 
those industries, but they, they have much more uh, uh, exposure to digital economy. You think about all the big internet companies, they are all US, like you know, Google, Amazon, uh, Netflix, it's all US. So if I have to bet that between Canada and US, I will bet that the US will do better in this downturn than Canada. Okay, let's move on to the next topic of a macro trend, climate change. Um, climate change, I, uh, when I was uh, with my former employer, I did about uh, uh, nine months uh, special project on climate change. So I know a little bit more uh, on this topic than most people. And I find it's fascinating and also scary at the same time. The more and more data you dig into, you realize that um, even if you today, we all do the right thing, try to reduce uh, the climate, the, the greenhouse gas emission, uh, the temperature will continue to rise until the mid-century. Because the, the greenhouse gas is already released into the atmosphere, already the heat is already absorbed in the ocean. So the, the earth has a very, very strong inertia. So it will keep going, even if you do it, do all the right thing today. The hope is that by the second half of this century, the temperature hopefully will come back down to the normal or lower temperature, but not the first. So you should assume that uh, for the next 20 years uh, or 30 years that the temperature will continue to increase. And, and this uh, picture is from NASA. I got from NASA website. You can see that where, where the temperature has been rising. Uh, you, you notice that mostly it's in the northern part that the, the increased temperature is highest and also in Europe and the Middle East. Uh, in Latin America, uh, Brazil is, is a country that quite experienced higher temperature. Uh, so that you should also pay attention to. Um, um, it has a lot of impact on you know, agriculture, um, uh, construction, um, water supply, and also create a lot of uh, geopolitical risk. Uh, the refugee crisis or the migrant crisis uh, I think will continue. Uh, it will affecting big part will be uh, European country because uh, the refugee, the migrant from uh, Africa will continue go uh, move up because they just cannot make a living or even survive in those uh, in those conditions uh, affected by climate change. And recently, I just uh, uh, read uh, some article which uh, climate change actually relate to. Uh, pandemic, virus, and disease. Uh, because in the northern part, you notice the northern part is getting warmer and warmer. So a lot of ice has been melted, and also a lot of uh, frozen uh, soil has been defrost. So the frozen soil is called permafrost. It turned out that there's a lot of virus and, and, and the bacteria was buried there. They are, they are not active because it's so cold. Uh, but once the, 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 the temperature rise, they will may they may come alive be active and that could create a problem because they has been uh, may, they have been dormant for centuries so human a lot of most of us have no immunity to those virus so that is something uh, i feel quite scary uh, to think about it given that our current experience with covid-19 hi victor victor yeah. hey san here this is really good content. Uh, I just, there's been some great questions in chat. I want to make sure that we maybe uh, try to wrap up the talk in five, five minutes so that we can take some of the questions for, for okay, uh, from sure. the team. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Sure. Okay, um, yeah, uh, so, so there's a lot of impact. You, you can think about you know, the, the drought, the sea level, sea level rise, um, uh, the, you know, the forest fire, there's a lot of impact, uh, which you know, you, you, I think you, we all understand, so we'll move on from here. Um, and from there, you can think about different industry that you can um, you can uh, uh, avoid, and some industry you can you can um, uh, invest in. Uh, you know, for example, you know, uh, fish farming or aquaponics. I, I know Sam, you uh, you invest in some of some of your venture into th those space. That's you know quite fascinating as, as well. And air conditioning is one thing. Uh, I'm pretty bullish in the 
air conditioning manufacturers. Uh, in Europe, I went, uh, two years ago, I went to Italy. Um, I learned that uh, only 30% of the household has air conditioning in their home. But in the summer, it was so hot. It's like a high 30, sometimes even over 40. So I'm pretty um, uh, bullish on air conditioning. Then after you identify the, the macro trend, then you want to move into uh, picking the company to invest. And there's many, uh, from the financial statement, you can uh, look at many indicator, many matrix. Uh, I'm listing here just a few uh, that most commonly use one, uh, you know, the market cap, the revenue growth, the profitability, like, you know, the net margin, growth margin. Uh, also, you should pay attention to the leverage risk. Uh, over the last 20 years, the interest rate is so low, uh, it, in, in, it incentivized company to borrow more money to juice up the bottom line. We, well, it's a good thing, but it's also bring uh, more risk. So you should pay attention to the, the debt level. Uh, and uh, then you have you know, price risk, volatility, beta, uh, short interest rate, how many people shorting the stock. And all this matrix, you can quite easily available from different source. I'm putting down at the bottom, I put some of the source I use, but I'm sure Sam or other people may have their favorite source, like for example, like Financial Times, uh, uh, Wall Street Journal, they all have those kind of information. So uh, you can look, look at them to decide whether which company is more suitable to your risk tolerance. And uh, after you uh, pick an in industry, you should look at, at all the peers, the similar company to pick the one that you think um, the most suitable. Um, you know, right now the pandemic, you know, a lot of retail are doing quite well. The low cost retail like Costco, Walmart, huge line up every day, almost line up outside people shopping the big car. Uh, you know, if you want to invest, you should take a look at the, their peer, the competitor, uh, how they're doing relatively and to see which one uh, you want to invest. Uh, pay attention to um, the revenue growth, the profit margin, and how much you're paying for, you know, sometimes it's a good company, but it can be too expensive because you're late. Uh, you're too late to the, to the game and the, piece, the price already beat up. And then we, so once you decide to invest in, in company, uh, you should think about uh, your portfolio. Uh, one thing I learned uh, from my study of, uh, you know, uh, the CFA course, uh, the Charter Financial Analyst course is that um, you should never look at investment in isolation. You should always look at your investment in the context of your portfolio. Um, as a person, for personal investment, you actually, you have not only look at your own investment portfolio, but you should also look at your family situation, your personal situation, your health, uh, your family obligation. Uh, for example, you know, if, you, if your spouse, your wife, your husband, uh, uh, is working, uh, but uh, he or she is an entrepreneur. That means that his, his income is more risky. Therefore, maybe you, you want to uh, take less risk in the investment portfolio. But if you both of you working uh, in an industry that very stable, for example, uh, you, know, you work in, um, say, uh, as a teacher, or you work in um, healthcare, uh, in high demand is more secure job maybe you can take more risk in your investment portfolio and how old are you uh, how far how far away from uh, retirement also uh, affecting how much risk you you can take and then as allocation um, uh, as allocation is important in the sense that um, it, it it tell you where you want to put your egg um, there's many uh, assets you can invest, you know, from low risk like cash, government bond, to high risk like a venture capital, like cryptocurrency, or even uh, collectible art. You know, those are high risk but potentially high return. Um, so you have you should have a roughly uh, uh, allocation to say, okay, given my risk tolerance, how much I'm I willing to put in each asset class. And then after you invest that, after a period of time, maybe six months, maybe one year 
you should look at the, it, you should go back to look at the, the weight your allocation to those bulk asset class and see whether they are off balance or not in a sense that they drift away let's say you 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 your investment is 60% equity, 40% bond. After one year, maybe the, your stock is doing really well, it's become 70%. Then you should ask yourself, say, no, should I sell some equity to buy some bond to balance back to your 60-40 asset allocation, uh, which is uh, quite important from risk management perspective. And finally, that um, don't have a home buy. Don't just invest in uh, the company or the industry you're familiar with, you should diversify cross country, uh, across uh, industry. Uh, one good example will be Canadian. Uh, I know some of my friends, they only buy Canadian stock because they, that's their bank told them or that they feel comfortable. But Canada, we, have, we don't have very diversified uh, economic base. Uh, you can think about, we are mostly concentrated on financial service, um, energy, and mining. That's the top three um, uh, sector in, in the Toronto Stock Exchange. Uh, we don't have big internet company. We don't have uh, uh, aerospace uh, or uh, defense industry. Uh, we don't have much a pharmaceutical company. Uh, so uh, by looking outside your own country, you could discover there's more investment opportunity. And finally, uh, the invest vehicle, what you choose, whether you, you're gonna do a public uh, investment like stock, like bonds, or you go to private investment like private equity uh, or other private uh, um, vehicle, you should uh, pay attention uh, you what risk you're taking. Uh, invest in private asset uh, is illiquid, so you should earn a risk premium because you're locking up your, your, uh, your um, your capital and also uh, private uh, asset doesn't they don't disclose they may not disclose as much as the public company because the regulation doesn't require them so you have to do more homework you have to try to find out the information about the private asset so you you may need more due diligence than say public company and finally uh, if you're investing if you have more time like me you know i'm retired so i have a lot of time to read uh, financial statement look at news then I probably can spend more time on the security selection, like picking stock, picking individual investment. But if you have a full-time job and you have no in, or you don't have a lot of interest in reading financial statement or looking on certain industry, you probably want to do indexing. You buy ETF, uh, you know, low-cost ETF. That might be the way to go. So that's all. That's the end to my. Uh, my chat and uh, hope you find uh, some useful uh, uh, information from my, my, my talk. And uh, now I'll pass it back to, to Sam. Victor, thank you. Thank you so much. That's uh, amazing content. Um, can, can I, 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 there's been some great questions that were text. I, I, I'm gonna, can you go back to the mac, macro slide, the yeah. trend slide? Um, okay. I'll start with one question I'll, and then I will go back to what the audience has asked. Yeah. I, I think you know, what, what I learned tonight is today, uh, everything we look at TV, newspaper, social, it's about pandemic, pandemic, pandemic. And I, I, I like, you know, Victor's trying to take us back and say, this is really one of many, many trends. Um, and, and so I want to maybe spend a couple of minutes on this is, is how Victor, you see, uh, and again, we're, we're almost at nine o'clock, and we, we promised. Uh, uh, so, so I, I guess the, the folks that, that that need to head off, uh, thank you for coming. But we're going to just keep going a little bit because I, I, have, I have a lot of questions, and I know the audience has some questions. Um, I'm trying to get a sense, Victor, your view. Uh, the the COVID nineteen uh, you mentioned there, you know, it's not the first time this happened. H how does this fit amongst the you know history, and then how do you see this playing out? How does the pandemic fit amongst all these major macro trends? Like, like, do, do you have a prediction? Do you have a thinking? Uh, um, you know, is, is this like 10% of what you're seeing or is, is this really, really uh, consuming you as it's consuming all of us today? Yeah, it, it, it is uh, on precedence for, you know, for most of our lifetime, uh, unless, you know, maybe our parents have seen that before um, in, I believe the last, uh, pandemic was in the 60s um, 
which most of us were probably hasn't born yet uh, or, or very, very young. Um, I feel the pandemic uh, will change things. Um, um, one thing uh, I think we realized the supply chain uh, is too concentrated in one or two country. And uh, if, uh, if some disruption in the supply chain, it, create, it could create uh, quite a bit of chaos and, and, and people may get really scared. And, and, and also you're at the mercy of some country who may decide, you know, not, I'm, we are not going to export certain things that certain medical supply. Um, so I believe that uh, uh, um, the country will maybe regulate some essential service that to make domestically, um, but at the cost means that it will have a higher cost. Uh, you know, the the reason we everyone want to make things in China because it's cheap. Um, so that's, I think, will, will happen. Um, I don't know uh, when uh, this pandemic will end, but you know, based on what I read uh, from some um, um, school of medicine, like a University of um, Washington uh, School of Medicine, they project that um, the the U.S. Uh, the death rate uh, will peak uh, in mid this April, and but there's a long tail that can go on to in, into summer. Um, and the other question is that with, with, the, with the, the mutated version of the virus will come back when the seasonal flu, seasonal flu season come, come back or not, uh, that will be remain to see. Um, so, so that's my insight. I don't have a lot of, you know, I'm not a medical expert in, in, in a sense. Uh, it does uh, consume a lot of uh, human psychic right now. Hmm. Yeah. Um, by the way, we, we are going to record this and share this on YouTube later. And for those of you that do have to leave, uh, we'll try to answer the questions, if not verbally, then on paper. And we'll share this in, in notes in a day or two. Um, and, uh, again, every, we're going to try to keep going. Victor, your time committing and, and those that can keep coming, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll open this up for, for more discussion. I'm going to just maybe, sh should I um, unmute for discussion? Uh, Victor, sure. Um, let's try that. Okay. Maybe you could stop sharing your screen. Do you want to stop okay. sharing your screen? Okay, I will stop. All right. So, um, I, I'm going to just go one more, and then maybe others can come in. Um, sticking with the macro, uh, whether it's climate change or this pandemic, I uh, I have a very dark view, uh, and I. I it's a bit controversial. I'd love to hear okay. what the folks here think. <laughs> um, and the, so I see, I personally see the major problem that is humanity faces, and this is a big question, is people. Mm -hmm. It's this population, right? We're, we're what, 7.6, um, you know, unless this pandemic goes, goes and kills billions of people, we're gonna be at 10 billion people in 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, we know that Cornell did a study uh, a couple of decades ago that says, the, the, the planet, uh, planet Earth uh, is not supposed to support more than 2 billion people. If you were to live in a, in a, in a humane way, meaning that right. obviously you have space, uh, we're, we're gonna be five times what Cornell suggested to the, the, the planet can, can fit to us, right? So, so the population is really causing the income disparity, it's ca causing the, a lot of pandemics and, and climate change. Mm -hmm. and I, I really, I mean, struck in the sense that unless people die, to me, how do we solve these problems, right? Or unless we move everybody to Mars, um, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I really want to know. I, I, other people read books or thought about this, right? W with the Earth at five x what it can support, mm -hmm. uh, Jorge, um, the planet, the planet will regulate the Earth. Uh, some somebody text that maybe you could just. What does that mean? Like like. I, I, <laughs> anyone, Victor? Okay, yeah. Um, uh, I think there's, uh, I think you bring, uh, brought up a, a very fundamental question. How do we measure our prosperity? So far, everyone is focused on growth, particularly economic growth, right? We always look at the GDP growth, um, but GDP, 
is not a perfect indicator. It doesn't capture many things in life. You know, it doesn't capture whether the, the environment getting better or worse, whether pollution getting higher or lower. Yeah, it doesn't measure the stress level we have at work or at home. Um, so I think that the mentality has to change that we have to look our life on this planet in a more holistic way, uh, both economic, but socially, but also environmentally. Um, I, I think that may be the, uh, one of the lessons we can, we, we, can, uh, we can take away. You know, during the last few weeks, uh, yeah, there's people notice that um, uh, the canal in Italy has become cleaner. Uh, you know, the, the animal, uh, sea animal was swimming to the harbor. Uh, there's less air pollution in China, apparently safe uh, over uh, 70,000 people just because of low air pollution based on uh, one of the study from uh, US, US University. Okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna uh, come back to the questions. I just want to quickly close up again, the people that want that need to leave at nine. So if you don't mind, I'll quickly show just two, two minutes. Um, and uh, Jerrica, if you're still on, I might need your help with the survey. Um, Jerrica, are you still there? Yeah, I, I want to just uh, do a quick 30 second commercial. Um, uh, my, my dad actually uh, is in the hospital right now with the virus uh, and uh, he, he's, he's stubborn, he's fighting it. He's uh, I think getting better. Um, and uh, my daughters have uh, launched a campaign uh, called A Million Masks Ontario. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Uh, I'll send the link in a little bit. Um, uh, uh, so my dad's in New York and, and uh, A Million Mask is a group that my friend uh, Ben started and they raise about but it's almost almost six hundred thousand dollars right now wow. to really source um, PPE and masks and really delivering the the equipment and masks to to New York City hospitals, including the hospital that my, my dad is at NYU. Wow. Um, anyways, my, my daughters are here, and with with uh, Ben's help, they set up a million masks Ontario. And what we're finding is uh, uh, Toronto, Ontario, is probably just a few weeks behind New York, uh, and also in dire need of masks. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you guys have money, a dollar to donate, please do so. Uh, and if not, you know, I would love it if you could just help, help social it so the girls get their uh, goal. Um, so thank you for that. I'll text the, I'll text the, um, the GoFundMe here. Um, and then with that, I promise we'll have a quick quiz on Victor's presentation. Uh, we will have two prizes. Let's see. Uh, you will have a one hour virtual lunch with Victor to answer all the questions as a first prize. And then for those interested, uh, I'd be happy to also uh, uh, throw in our Investment Wizards book um, as we get closer to, to publishing sometime later this year. So with that, uh, we're gonna do a five question quiz. And again, after that, we come back to more detailed Q and A for those that wanna hang around. Uh, now, Jericho, you have to teach me how to do this. You there? Yep, I'm okay. here. All right, so what do I go to, to launch this quiz, my friend? Yeah, you, you just have to click on the poll. Where I don't see the poll. <laughs> okay, are you able to launch it? I'm gonna make you the host. I'm gonna make you the host. Mm -hmm. Make host, okay, you're the host now. Could you launch the poll? Yep, I can. All right, so we okay, have five I questions. And I, I think the way it works is, is multiple choice. And uh, yeah, the, winner, the winners will, will, will walk away with, with some cool prizes. Okay, Jerka. Oh. Here's the first. I just text the GoFundMe campaign. If you guys can go like it, that'd be great. And Jerka, are you okay to? Yep, perfect. This is the first one. Uh, is everyone seeing it? I'm not seeing it. Okay. Oh, I All see right. it. So I see it. Yeah. Okay. So Victor thinks these sectors will benefit from the pandemic, except one. And do we just click on it? 
Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. I apologize. I. Mm. Okay. Okay. I. So if we've clicked on it, do we go to the next one? Yep. And then. And here is the result. Okay, so energy was the right answer. Yeah. Okay, let's energy go. Energy is let's the right go. answer. All right, number two. Number two, one second. Here we go. Victor believes these sectors will be harmed by the pandemic except one. Okay, and here's the result. <laughs> okay. And then the correct answer, food, grocery, delivery. Okay, I, I'm not seeing that. I'm not sure if others are seeing that. This is a work in progress. Okay, uh, number three, and I, I hope there's a way to track whoever has the best answers. Mm -hmm. This is the first time we're doing this. Okay, what's number three? Three. This is number three. Okay. Okay. And here is the result. Ocean fishing. All right. Okay. Two more to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And here is the result. All right, everybody got this one right. And we have one more to go. Yes, last one. Oops, one second. <laughs> you may be surprised by the answer, right, Victor? Okay. And where is the result? Okay. Everyone to the right. <laughs> you, you, you're, you're not pretty enough to be a ballet dancer. No. Oh. Okay. I, I don't know if Jericho can tally the results, but. Uh, yes, I will. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll announce it in the meetup. And uh, mm -hmm. honestly, if anybody wants to, is interested in reading the drafts of the book, I'd be happy to share an ebook of that to get feedback. Uh, it's about a hundred pages now. Uh, we'll, we'll incorporate uh, more, con more, more content. Um, so it's past nine o'clock. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. Um, I, I'm going to be able to stay on for a little bit if Victor can, and we can just maybe have a discussion. But uh, of course, those of you uh, were supposed to stop at nine need to go. Thank you for coming. Um, and, uh, and uh, stay safe, okay? Victor, are you going to stand for a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. great. So there, so I'm going to keep going. There are a bunch of questions for you, Victor. I'm going to okay. just go to the chat and pick um, uh, some comments that, uh, that people are actually dating on Zoom, so matchmaking apps might have a good chance. Uh, that's true. Um, uh, question for Victor. Can he recommend trends or signs of growth to watch for when evaluating tech and uh, tech opportunities. Valuing tech opportunities. Yeah, trends or signs of growth to watch for when you evaluate tech opportunities. Um, one thing I uh, want to look at the technology trend uh, is um, number one is, is uh, um, I should say, um, what's called network effect. 
network effect. Network effect is one of the terms that you usually um, uh, apply to um, a network based uh, the uh, technology, for example, uh, Facebook. So imagine if you just start with one person on Facebook, it doesn't have much value. But as you more and more people join Facebook, the Facebook the value increase is not linear, is exponential. Uh, and uh, also that the network effect also means that um, uh, it's very hard for people to leave. Uh, because let's say if you leave Facebook, uh, you should join another another social media, and your friend is not there. So you have lot, you don't have a lot of incentive to leave. So that also uh, make um, the technology, the platform, much more sticky. Uh, so that's something I I, I look uh, at uh, when I invest in is is the network effect of the of the technology uh, to see um, mm -hmm. how easy the competitor can come in to take to take your business away. Great, great. Okay, somebody asked for the slides. Yes, we uh, with Victor is okay. We can share the slides tomorrow. Um, so th there is some discussion that my my question about population is too dark. I think Shervin said, you know, human ingenuity and technology would, would eventually solve the problem. Uh, I hope so. I, and 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 I, I uh, that's that's what everyone would want to believe. Um, mm -hmm. Though again, overcrowding is a big issue. I, I uh, I'm a huge, huge fanboy of Elon Musk and, mm -hmm. and Jeff Bezos. Mm -hmm. uh, not for Tesla or Amazon, really for what they're doing with space tech. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really the inter interplanetary stuff. I, I it, you know, I think 10, 20 years ago, it, it all looks so, so, so science fiction. But yeah. probably it's real right now, right? Yeah. It, it, it's it's coming. It's definitely coming. Yeah. yeah. I, I, because it has to come. Yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, let's see. There's a question from Greg. Uh, Greg is suggesting that uh, making you investments in US equities is good because you see some upside in FX over quarterly horizon. Mm -hmm. He expects the Canadian dollar to drop. Has that been your experience? Why does the Canadian dollar drops? Why is it so weak against the dollar in times like this? Uh, well, two reasons. Uh, number one is that um, um, because the U.S. dollar is a global currency, it's pretty much a de facto global currency. Uh, so, uh, in in time of crisis, uh, you want to go to uh, the stable currency, the strong currency, that the most liquid currency. So, so U.S. dollar usually is the choice. Uh, people will put the park park the money uh, uh, into into U.S. dollar. The second question: Why does Canada Canadian dollar? has depreciating. It's, it's true that over the last uh, couple months, Canadian dollar has uh, depreciated um, uh, against US dollar, uh, partially because the, uh, uh, the oil price, uh, our, our, our Canadian dollar, uh, the correlation is, is very tied to uh, oil price. So that means that the, the higher the oil price, uh, the, strong, the stronger the Canadian dollar because they have to buy they have to buy Canadian oil. Uh, we export a lot of a commodity as well. Then our dollar becomes Canadian dollar becomes stronger. But oil price dropped so much from you know sixty dollar to now it's twenty dollar. Uh, so uh, that means that they don't have to buy so much Canadian dollar to buy our oil. Um, uh, maybe even because uh, oil sand has the highest uh, marginal cost of production in the world. Uh, so. Uh, we, maybe there's people who would rather uh, buy the cheap oil from from the Middle East, or maybe buy the cheaper oil from U.S. the shale oil. Uh, therefore, maybe less demand for Canadian oil. That's the that's the reason. All right. Okay. Um, does anybody else have questions? Because it is running. We're running about 16 minutes late. Um, if not, we can try to wrap this up. Uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of the night. Okay, Victor, I think, I think that, that was a great session. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, where is this going to be posted on YouTube? Um, uh, uh, bon, there's a private message. Yeah, uh, Jerrica, my assistant, will, will, will curate this and, and put this on, uh, on the link and we'll post this on the uh, meetup group, okay? 
Everyone, thank you. Uh, we're going to uh, try to get speakers from different parts of the world. I already reached out to a friend of mine who is a super successful entrepreneur and venture capitalist in Brazil, because I'm very keen to hear what's happening in Latin America. And then uh, sometime in the next three weeks, we'll also have a, uh, a top 10 China VC venture capitalist um, who's invested in a number of uh, unicorns talk about what's happening over in China and Asia as well, so get a better perspective on, on, on that part of the world. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank, thank you, Victor. Sam. Appreciate it, thank everyone. You, Have a good thank night. Thank you, everyone, night. for coming. Thank you for joining us. Please visit Wizards Institute to access the blog summary of today's session, to learn more about other speakers, and to network with other investment wizards. Wizards Institute, the number one community to learn smart investing and financial freedom.